Look, it took 244 years to get to 10 trillion. And then we did another 10 in 18 months. 244 yeah. years, 18 months. So the fact that the things that we denominate in that currency, real estate, stocks, gold, Bitcoin, yeah. whatever. Hey guys, welcome back to Everyday Finance. In this video, Mark Yusko discuss about Bitcoin, according to Mark Yusko. The reality that the items we value in that currency, real estate, equities, and gold, Bitcoin, is a digital currency that is highly respected. There is only one Bitcoin, and there will only ever be 21 million at S. Won't even get close to that number because some are lost or stolen. But it's a limited resource that's being driven by these constantly declining currencies, euro dollars or yen, whichever when we examine the previous bull run. We can see that it was partially caused by X and made worse by the fact that because they lowered the value of the currency by doubling the money supply, Bitcoin should have doubled consequently. The shift from 15 pre-pandemic to 30 is just the dollar falling by 50%. That's all that remains, similar to the shift from 10 to 59. Like, what the heck is that? That was $10 trillion going. Mark Yusko apologies. $10 billion are being invested in Bitcoin, an asset that trades for only due to the fact that so much Bitcoin is kept at the moment, roughly 6 billion each day and lots of things Mark Yusko discussed, so please watch the video to end and like, share this video and subscribe our channel Everyday Finance. Thanks. You know, our, our whole society is all about answers. Yeah. But that's not what's important. What's important is the questions. And the thing I enjoy about doing this show with you all is you actually think about good questions. And that question right now is the one that's really driving everything that we're going to think about going forward. Because what, what people just, I don't know why they don't understand it, but they just don't seem to understand. When we talk about assets... We have to talk about what we're denominating them in. Right. Right. Yeah. So take, I always say this like about my house, right? So in the last three years, since the lockdowns, I live in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. It's hot because Apple's coming here and Google's coming here and all that stuff. But, but the reality is, according to Zillow, my house went up by 50%. Mine too. And I laugh at it all the time. And like, my house didn't grow. It yeah. didn't get more efficient. It actually wore out a little bit. I'd put money into it because some stuff wore out. So what happened, the thing I denominate the house in, dollars, got worse. To your point, we had the free money era. We yep. printed, look, it took 244 years to get to 10 trillion. And then we did another 10 in 18 months. 244 yeah. years, 18 months. So the fact that the things that we denominate in that currency, real estate, stocks, gold, Bitcoin, yeah. whatever, appreciated. Well, one Bitcoin is one Bitcoin. Yeah. And will always be one Bitcoin. And yeah. they'll only forever be 21 million. And the right actually won't even be that many because some are lost and stolen. But it's a finite asset. And it's being chased by these ever devaluing currencies, yen, euro, dollars, whatever. So when we look at that last bull run, it was partly exacerbated by the fact that they doubled the money supply. Therefore, they cut the value of the currency. So Bitcoin should have doubled. Right. So the move from 15 pre-pandemic to 30 is simply the dollar going down 50%. That's all that is. Yeah. The rest, like when we went from 10 to 59, like, well, what's that? Well, that was $10 trillion going, I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry, not 10 trillion, sorry, 10 billion, $10 billion going into GBTC in an asset that only trades about, at the time, about 6 billion a day. Right. Because so much of Bitcoin is held either, again, lost or stolen, or in multi-sigs where not everybody agrees, or yeah. hodlers, people who don't want to sell yeah. at, you know, they say, I won't sell at any price. Sure you will. There's a price at which you'll take some and convert it to fiat to pay your bills or whatever. And there's some where you say, 
okay, I'm going to take a little running money and, and stash it aside and maybe gold or something else. Um, and there are others that say, no, I'm not going to sell ever, ever. Fine. But the amount that does trade is relatively small. So if you increase the demand, like what's coming on January 8th, right? I'm, I'm making the call, right? Calling my shot, uh, like the babe, right? It's for the, is, for the Bitcoin, for the Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin ETFs. ETFs. They're going to okay. crown the king on January 8th, right? which also happens to be my son's birthday, which is kind of cool, but Elvis's birthday. And why that day? Well, the 10th is when they have to decide on BlackRock. And they always okay. like to do this on Sunday night, Monday morning. So yeah. they, they yeah, leak yeah. it on Sunday night. So the big dogs can front run. And then the, you know, the general public gets to react to the, the press release on Monday morning. So that's, that's what I think is going to happen. According to Mark Yosko, the price of Bitcoin increases if we express it in dollars. There is a technological surge in which 650,000 people were let go from big tech, which is a large number, and it appears that some, some of them do, but many do not, and many of them lack sufficient income to never work again. Apparently, some of them are quite intelligent, and as a result, they are launching new businesses and participating in these cycles after the recession. Everyone says, well, we didn't have a recession, which is true. Not too concerned, 2022 saw a recession comparable to that of 2001. We had two negative quarters and 1% annual growth. You don't want to call it a recession at this point. A recession as a result of manipulating the employment figures. Not that it matters, but after 2001, 2002 and 2003 were some of the greatest eras for venture capital firm formation. And that's because... In those people are rightly displaced during downturns and emerge as the most powerful force in the Bitcoin is not the universe you know. And in fact, the reason Yosko most enthusiastic about Bitcoin is enthusiastic about many digital assets, but especially about Bitcoin. Let's back to Mark Yosko interview. John, do something John racist, but but in, yeah. in that show, there was one cool thing. They had a, a planetary alignment where five of the planets were, were in a line. And that's kind of what we have coming into 2024. We have this celestial alignment of all the things, the all cycles. So we have we have the, the four year cycle in Bitcoin, right? The halving yeah. happens in April, early May, uh, depending on the blocks. But but that's going to happen. We've got this uh, wave of liquidity that's about to be unleashed with the approval <clears throat> of the ETF. We've got this cyclical wave of it looks like the economy slowing. Therefore, the Fed's going to go back to accommodation, uh, which will devalue the current the dollar more, which means if we price Bitcoin in dollars, the price of Bitcoin goes up. I mean, that's just the way it works. We've yeah. got a technological wave where 650,000 people were laid off from big tech. That's a lot. And that's it turns out some of them don't have enough money to never work again. Some do, but many don't. And turns out some of them are like really smart. And so yeah. they are starting new companies and and in these cycles post downturn. So everyone says, well, we didn't have a recession. Fine, you can believe that. I don't really care. 2022 was as much a recession as 2001, right? We had two negative quarters. We had 1% growth for the year. That's a recession. Now, you don't want to call it a recession because you juice the employment numbers. I don't really care. But post 2001, 2002, 2003 were some of the best vintages for business formation, venture capital, innovation. And it's because during those downturns, people get displaced. Right. And turns out most powerful force in the universe you know, not Bitcoin. I mean, that's close, but no, I'm just kidding. Is, is human creativity. Human creativity is yeah. unbelievable. And actually the reason I am the most excited about Bitcoin, I'm excited about other things in digital assets, but, but Bitcoin in particular, and I'm stealing this directly from Jimmy Song. Um, although Jimmy got mad at me. I saw him at an event recently. He was mad at me because I, 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 um, I let him take the, the iris picture of mine for the Worldcoin thing. And it doesn't mean I'm supporting Worldcoin. It doesn't mean I'm an investor in Worldcoin. It doesn't even believe I believe in it. But I was like, you know yeah. what? I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. I'm I'm gonna see what it's like. And you know, you tell me you don't save my eyeball picture. I don't really care about my eyeballs. I already gave them to clear. So whatever. Yeah. Um. So I'm not really worried about that. 
but I want to see, I want to have a digital ID. I want to have a unique digital identifier, little barcode. Cool. But he was mad at me that I did that. So anyway, I apologize, Jimmy. I didn't mean it. Um, but Jimmy talks about if you get paid in fiat, you're a slave. And it's a really politically charged word. You're not supposed to use it, but you are, right? You're a slave. Why? Because the government can steal the wealth back from you through devaluation. Yeah. If you get, if we migrate to a deflationary currency like Bitcoin and you got paid in Bitcoin, yeah. you're no longer a slave. You, you unshackle yourself. And what that does is it unleashes human creativity because you no longer have to work your slave and job, right? It's the, you know, the, the Bachman Turner Overdrive song, you know, uh, and, you know, quit your slave and job and get your pay or start your right. slave and job and get your pay, right? That, man, that goes all the way to the 70s. They've been talking about this. And so people knew that it was debt slavery and fiat slavery, but we didn't know how to break out of it because we needed the money to buy the you know, food and pay the bills. Well, now if you can have an asset that actually appreciates as the dollar devalues, yes, you have a store of value and you can take time to think, to create, and not everybody will be good at it, but the ones that are, I think it unleashes amazing potential. And the thing that gets me excited, and why I call it the truth net, is the trust industry has existed for 838 years. So the Medici's formed these first banks. They stole the idea from the Portuguese monks, the Knights uh, Templar, um, and they created fractional reserve banking. Okay, great. Fractional reserve banking has had a great run for 838 years. And it doesn't mean that it necessarily has to go away, but the idea of two ledgers controlled by someone that we trust to oversee it, right? And that we pay money to, so $7 trillion gets extracted yeah. from the global system for trust, right? To verify that my account has my amount of money in it. That it's when I transfer it to the, the auditors come in and say it happened, or the broker makes sure that my security is where they say it is. All of that trust can be replaced with truth. Because if we have a blockchain that says Mark has a Bitcoin, I don't need JP Morgan or Deutsche Bank or any broker or any accountant or any lawyer or anyone. It's there. It's truth. However, and if we liberate seven you, trillion dollars. Just think about this. If we liberate seven trillion dollars. And it's going back to the people. It's those going back people. to the people that are operating. Yeah. But what will they do with it? They'll yeah, invest. They they'll create. Yeah. And According to Mark Yusko, you're in luck if we switch to a deflationary currency like Bitcoin and you get paid with it. You release your chains to become free. And that's what happens. Releases human creativity since you're not forced to labor as a slave to get a job done. Instead, you can focus on what you do best. You know, the Bachman Turner Overdrive song. So you should resign your slave job and receive your money or begin working as a slave and receive your pay. This has been discussed since the 1970s, so individuals was aware that it was fiat and debt slavery. If you learned something from this video, then please like this video and subscribe our channel Everyday Finance, and we will meet in next video. Thanks.